Hi, all my beautiful souls. I am Lady Stars on Fire, and this is your weekly healing messages for September 17th through the 24th. Um, now, before I get into everything, I'm going to try to put it all on one video. I hope that all works. I've been having trouble with my phones, but I think I got it right now. Anyway, um, to start off, you may want to Google the uh, Animal Spirit Guide or the Animal Medicine of... Um, the bobcat or even the lynx. There's just too much information for me to give to you. And it could go in so many different ver variations. Depending on who and what you are. It may be different information that you need. So therefore I'm telling you directly from Spirit. That they are sending you to go Google the bobcat and the lynx as Spirit Guides. So you can see what the totem information is. The power information is. And the guidance basically. And see if that fits your life in any way, shape or form. I'm also given for this week a whole, whole lot of the color orange. I'm given the color orange. I'm giving it in orms, orbs. I'm giving it in flowers. I'm giving it in so many diff different directions. The color orange. And the meanings that go with the color orange. However, I'm also being given like a highlighted glow of gold with that. So I posted on Facebook earlier, in case you go back and check, um, what some of those meanings are for yellow and orange. And kind of merge that energy together. Because that's kind of the spirit guidance that they're trying to give you to help you move forward in this week. This week is very much coming in to a new level of truly standing up and in the power of your true authenticity and are you brave enough to really truly honestly start to do it it's like they say there's it, it, it's it's one thing to say and walk in the path it's another to actually be walking the path so to speak i'm given the guidance of more or less in a form of being the guidance, given the guidance of it's one thing to actually stand and become in who you are in your power and do what it is you were meant to do while you were here. And it's another thing to not quite know how to go about doing it and allow yourself to be pushed around in opposite ways. So the point is, this is about coming into a new level as we move forward into actually next year, more than this year. But as we start prepara pre preparations for next year, it's it's helping us come into a higher, more higher vibrational level of standing in our power and our true authenticity, but understanding exactly who and what that truly deeply is. We're moving in that direction is what I'm being told. I was given for the runes this week, I was given Nafis, which kind of looks like a T, but it's sideways um, for the runes. And Nafis speaks to us of the need of the fire to distress the fire. It speaks to us of determination, endurance, and the sacrifice it takes for that. It is the presence of a situation of something that must be worked through. It does deal with karmic obstacles, obviously, with what's been going on with the astrology. And I'll be back for that in a minute. But it is speaking to us of understanding that great change that we come through, that we finally realize that power already was, in, was within us. We already have that power, but we didn't know. And this is part of what I'm saying the Spirit is giving us. Now... It does deal with resistance and friction. It does deal with strengthening your will and the fire from within. But it also deals with needing to banish and warm the cold. Basically, turning stress into strength. Action according to the need of positive self-reliance. It is the ruin of overcoming skill, karma, survival, and self-preservation point blank, meeting the necessary requirements and manifestation to make that become part of your today and your life and your abundance and everything that you are creating. It is breaking the addicted, addictive old patterns. I am also given a La Goose. La Goose looks like an upside down L. La Goose speaks to us of water, sea, the lake, the life force itself. It is the water and the rivers and the oceans, the worlds of that. It focuses on issues of emotion, creativity, and spirituality. The healing power of renewal, 
manifestation and psychic matters. It journeys into water or into the depths of self. It can also bring about the magical power at work and someone who is working with their personal magic. You want to look for emotional people, creative people, just whom seem to often get their way. It also speaks to us of creativity, vital power, the spirit, our stamina, our layers of our existence, the unknown, energy manifesting from the unknown, Sur release, surrender, let go. It also speaks to us of our sorcery projection and the will of psychic power of responsiveness then i am given radio uh, i gotta go find it in my book god i haven't seen me use my book in quite a while i've been having problems with camera that's why you had not been seeing me use the book in quite a while the radio looks kind of like an r radio speaks to us of the ride thor's chariot riding air and air, sorry. Um, it is the world of rhythm, rhyme, and the dance of life. It focuses on matters of order, justice, and change through preparation, right? There's your key. Structure and outward control are all about its issues. It indicates a journey over land or from a vehicle, such as in a car. It points to the presence of people involved with practices of law, of skilled ritual artwork, rules, ceremonies, as well as magical rites. Sorry, I got a hair in my mouth. Um, it is channeling of energy according to the natural law, ritual magic, controlled movement, and the very dance of life. Primal order expressed in ethical relationships as well as with the environment itself. Ruin cast of self-order and measured change, growth, through planning and preparation. And then it does tell you that logic and ethics do apply. Then we are given Burkina. Burkina is the shape shifting that is taking place as we move into the next year and actually set everything into its forward brand new movements. It will start before the new year. However, it has something to do with, I'm looking for it, it has something to do with why it's also taking as long as it does to fully get going in the right direction again. Burkina is all about shape-shifting. It is the magical appearance. It is power of the illusion. It is the shaman practice and the sexual freedom. It speaks to us of a loss of self-awareness. It, uh, Oh, no, sorry, wrong. That's upside down. That's inverted, and we're not talking about that. It speaks to us of ex the exorcism of what is no longer needed and what is no longer germane in your life. It is the goddess made manifested. It is preparation for the new starts, beginning from learning off of the old and the bad of those patterns that were not working. Basically, it points to women, women's issues, and female mysteries. It is all about the new beginnings and fertility that comes with the magic of the goddess at work. Burkina also speaks to us of looking towards powerful women. Basically, powerful women may be coming into the situation this week. We move slowly, darlings, as we learn how to move forward. It takes time to figure that out. Now, with that being said, I'm going to get into the astrology. And the astrology, let me start off with reminding you, Venus is in shadow. And with it being in shadow, that means, for one... I'm being told, remember, something from six to eight years ago is returning in your life from six to eight years ago. Something that didn't quite work out. Something that made a change in your life. Something that redirected your life, but maybe didn't quite tweak, you know, get tweaked the right way. Didn't quite work out. It's just something about it is there coming back now in that six to eight years to remind you what you did wrong. So that you don't make the same mistake now. It's learning from those experiences. And that is a reminder. That is not a redo. And like I said, next month is when Venus goes retrograde. This, from that six to eight years, is returning. This is a reminder to help you redirect properly in a more positive, healthy way as you move forward. Now... September 17th through the 24th. First off, Mercury is going to be moving into Aquarius on Friday at the end of the week on the 21st. Sorry, the 20th 
Vista is going to be moving into Capricorn with Saturn and with Pluto. Okay? It's powerful information. And that's going to be happening Thursday. Then, Aqu then Mercury moves into Aquarius. And then we have the fall equinox. Have a blessed fall equinox, everybody. Also, please... Pay attention and go back to my website or my page because I do the global healing. And it, funny how it always happens to have some kind of major event is happening on the 22nd for global healing to be happening that day. And that was not made by me. That was made by spirit. So please be part of the global healing event and go back to my website, ladystarsandfire.com, and you will find that information there. With that being said, the, the fall equinox takes place on the 22nd, the global healing takes place on the 22nd, and the sun moves into Libra on the 22nd, which is um, Saturday. All of this information takes place. The full moon is where we are moving all of this energy towards, which actually will not take place until next week, but it will be taking place on the 24th with a void, void of course, from Pisces and Aries. So finishing a, finishing a cycle and starting a new one as we go through that full moon energy. Pluto is also going to be going direct on the 30th. I remind you this because I'm going ahead a little bit. Pluto is going direct. Pluto is death, decay, and destruction, or rebirth, renewal, and regeneration, which means in retrograde, he's in serious overdrive. If there's anything that's not getting through your thick head, especially about Mars when it was in retrograde, or about Saturn when it was in retrograde, now that they're going direct and starting to try to pick up speed and move forward, Pluto is going to smack the shit out of you right upside of your head this week before it goes retrograde, I mean, before it goes direct, because Pluto will calm down. After he goes direct. Because Pluto is always inward. But when he's in retrograde, he's like kicking in the door like, I can't have this shit anymore. This will change. And this is that week, if you haven't gotten it through your thick head, that you're going to get the smack upside the head. I promise you. Now, also, you have coming up on the 25th, which actually is in the next week, Chiron moves back into Pisces. Chiron is the wounded healer, the gatekeeper of wholeness. This is part of why I say things are not fully going to get totally moving in the positive right direction and full speed and the whole new cycles will start until Chiron leaves Pisces and comes back into Aries because it's going back to that 12th house to reevaluate some of this stuff that's been going on with all of those retrogrades and those solar eclipses and lunar eclipses that you just went through back in July. So he's going to be reevaluating that now that the gatekeeper of wholeness is stepping back into that 12th house and seeing what it is you're in denial about, what it is that you don't want to heal over and what you're still lying to yourself about so that he can make you see it, then bring it forward and then jump back into Aries in the direct motion and truly start that cycle. So this is going to take some time to get going. Even though things are moving forward, they are moving forward. But at the same time, they're in an evaluation period, and it will take time. And it won't fully feel like everything's starting to go forward in full until, you know, we get mo closer to December and October. I mean, December and January. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Now, this week you've got the moon in Capricorn. Since I started late with the video, I didn't come out until... uh. Monday and Tuesday. So we're seeing that the moon, the moon, learn to talk one day. The moon is in Capricorn this week. Then as we kind of go into the weekend, we're in Aquarius. And as we come into Sunday and Monday, we're in Sagittarius. So this means we are really wanting to look at our foundations and, and, how and what it is we need to create those new foundations and make them sturdy and strong. But we can be a little methodical about it right now. We can be overcritical about it right now. And then as we move into Aquarius, we kind of go from overcritical to balls to the walls. I can do whatever I want. And I'm the, I'm the rubble here and I'll make my own decisions. And then when we get back into Sagittarius, the moon gets more spiritually spiritually based and higher learning and wanting to truly understand and be closer to that higher self. So this is the energy that those emotions are going to be going through. Now, we do have a Grand Cross until the 26th. And this Grand Cross is, you know, all of this week is, is going to be bringing in some intense, tense energies. And the best way for me to explain it is you're talking about uh, Mars and Lilith 
in Aquarius, which is a universal 11th house of your outer community in general in some form or another. I, I tend to mix the 10th and the 11th house a little bit because it is the outer community and I do it in a universal level. However, it is the outer community. It could be dealing with your friends, your, your friends, your groups, your uh, memberships. It could be dealing with, you know, those outwardly goals that you are creating and people that you might be working with in, in that environment as well. So Mars is your warrior. It's your inner SWAT team, babe. It is standing there with Lilith. And Lilith is... Nobody's going to make me do a fucking thing that I don't want to do out of discussion. So your inner warrior has extra firepower right now for passion, action, aggression, and fire in general. Okay? And that also brings out that sexual energy because Lilith is back in it. Lilith is like, I'm going to do... I am in my power and I've got Mars right here backing me up basically. But Mars is not exactly getting along with Venus. Venus and Mars are your universal lovers. They're not seeing eye to eye. They can't agree. They can't view things together at this moment. Venus is in Scorpio. Venus is where birth, death, rebirth, and that fertility all takes place of that change. Okay? It's also the mystery of the change, but it's also the universal eighth house. So it deals with the relationships and what it is those relationships are responsible for. Not just your friends, your family, and your loved ones, but what is your relationship for, responsible for? I mean, when you go to work, what is work responsible for? It's there to give you money. It's there to do its jo to do your job. The bosses are there to do their job. There is always a responsibility within the relationship. What are those responsibilities that you're looking at? Basically, when we're paying attention to these situations. So you've got Venus, which is in shadow, not necessarily getting along with Mars and Lilith. And that is your sensitivity. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it's very sensitive, physical to the touch, as well as emotional depths right now. You're really viewing things somewhat from a darker point of view because you're trying to get to the depths of it. Not that you mean to be in shadow or you mean to be dark. You just want to get to the depths of it so that you can really help the universal lovers within yourself come back to peace. But here's the thing. Those two are also not getting along with Uranus. Your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom. And then in Taurus is your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, along with what it is that makes you feel the luxury within yourself, the, the enjoyment within yourself, the sexual energy within yourself, and who and what you are to feel passionate about your sacral chakra, okay? Like I said, we are being cleansed. We are coming through a, a, a form of unblocking some of these chakras because we're being calibrated, and that has a lot to do with this uh, Grand Cross, and on top of it, that Grand Cross is speaking to the North Node, <laughs> the North Node and Leo, which is talking about what it is you have to learn in order to move forward, point blank. If you don't learn it, you're not moving forward, so... It's difficult and intense, but it is soulfully needed, okay? Now, while we have that energy, we also have Chiron going straight through this Grand Cross in opposition with the Sun and Mercury. Okay, your wounded healer, the gatekeeper of wholeness, is not getting along with your personal sunshine and illumination, your core energies, as well as your Mercury, your communication. You're not comfortable about this communication that's going to have to take place in order for this movement to go forward. But it's something that has to be done, okay? And while these two are in this conversation, they're also creating a T-square with Saturn, with your rules, your walls, your boundaries, and Vista, which is moving even closer, to Saturn. So that adds your soul fire into that on top of it. So you have your wounded healer not fully agreeing with your soul illumination, shine, and core, and communication, and then testing what are the rules, walls, and boundaries. Are they set right? Why aren't they set right? What do we have to do to fix this? Basically, it's not comfortable but it's needed. Now, it's also having its own special conversation, the Sun and Mercury, but it is trining Mars.
Okay, that gives it some up energy, some positivity there. Because Mercury and the sun in that core energy, in that your way you shine, the way it is that you're known for, you know, in Virgo, which is also helping you with what you're in service about, service to yourself, health and diet as well, you know. And then this is talking about that communication of giving Lilith and Mars, that passion and that power and that communication to actually get in there and have the balls to steer and make it happen, basically. So this is a positive energy. The North Node is trining Chiron this week, too. So the North Node, which is what you have to learn in order to move forward in that universal fifth house, which is going to be dealing with creativity, is going to be dealing with, you know, nobleness, but is also going to be dealing with, you know, your heart and your compassion. It's like I always say, the king of the jungle, the lion for Leo, it's not just about being the king. It's about being responsible or having the responsibility to the kingdom as well. So you're taking that north node and that energy right now, speaking to Chiron, which is the wounded healer, which is in the Pisces, which is in Pisces. But I'm telling you, it's sitting on the cusp of Aries. Because so it's picking up both Aries and Pisces energy. Both denial and sacrifice and you know, the healing that needs to be made before it can move into that first house, even though it's actually moving the opposite direction because it's also speaking to Aries right now. I mean, it's that's where it's going is in the Pisces. It's still in that fiery, passionate, hot, hot energy of, uh, I can start anything, but then I get bored and I kind of get over it. Basically, the wounded healer is going back to go, where did this go wrong? And it's going to be really focusing on that as soon as it jumps into Pisces. Now, you also have Neptune and Pisces, which are in a trine with Je Jupiter. But it will be picking up that Venus energy, like I said, that is in shadow right now. And Jupiter magnifies everything. That's what Jupiter is. It's a magnet. It's higher knowledge, it's abundance, and it's the magnet, point blank. It brings everything to it. And if you're not positive... In this energy that's coming out of Venus, you are bringing nothing but more stuff to not be positive about. Keep your manifestation right. It is time to be stepping into a more positive, higher place of thinking. A more... The way Spirit's been putting it to me lately is stop having generic love. You need to look from stopping on a lower way of thinking. It's not about generic love anymore. This is about unconditional loving and what the higher vibration truly needs. Okay? So Jupiter is bringing this information to Neptune and having a positive trine here, which is being able to give you the creativity, the magic to be able to bring that power full forward and into your life, into tangible life, as long as you're not letting that Venus shadow pull you down and turn that jet Jupiter against you. Okay, you also have, as you come into the, we the weekend, though, as we end the week, we come into the weekend, and we go into Sunday and Monday starting next week, Neptune and Pisces, Jupiter are having that trine, but then, then, Chiron will be in that energy as well, and so will the moon. Here's another thing that is very important that most people are not going to be talking about. Libra. Libra is a force to be reckoned with right now. And most people are not going to be talking about Libra in any way, shape, or form. Everything right now is dealing with your relationships in one form or another. And that is because of the changes coming for the new beginnings for the new year and as we move forward into our moving forward. Remember, I said this is the number two year. I said this whole year this was a number two year, which meant it was about growth, which meant it was about learning to stand and take a take a harmonious stand and growth in all areas in your life. And that meant dealing with shadow and ego. And that is what this is. This is flushing that out after those eclipses and after um after the eclipses and all these retrogrades. And right now, you want to remember, Neptune is also in retrograde. Pisces, I mean, Neptune is, Neptune is in retrograde. Neptune is where fantasy smacks you in the face with harsh reality. It is not a great time to escape reality right now. You got Venus in shadow, which is having that conversation with it, trying to darken that energy. Okay? 
And right now would not be the time to be tempted by escaping reality because it will go against you. Trust me. This is the time to make Ma Neptune work for you, not against you. It's not that partying time. And you have Uranus in retrograde, which was questioning your self-worth, your self-value, if you let that Neptune go in the wrong way. Now, I'm sorry, back to Libra. Libra is a force to be reckoned with because, first off, it's talking about your relationships, baby. All of your relationships. You have a relationship with everything that you care about, including yourself. You have a relationship with your friends, your lovers, your children. You have a relationship with your 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 job. You have a relationship with your money. You have a relationship with your car. When you have no money and you have no car, you know about your relationship with them. Point blank. So anything you care about, you have a relationship with. And this is all about health as wealth. End of discussion. In Libra, it's dealing with relationships. Cirrus is there. Cirrus is the threefold theory, honey. Cirrus is too close to home. And Cirrus speaks to us about... Are we nurturing correctly? Have we been nurtured correctly? And are we, in turn, in that cycle, putting it back out the way that we either were nurtured correctly or incorrectly? And are we fixing it if it was incorrectly done? Basically. That's what this all comes down to. So it's not just self-worth within these relationships right now. And it's also speaking to you about... If the relationships have been abusive because of neglect in any form. So, and with that being said, on both sides of uh, Libra, you have Make Make and you have uh, Haumea, which is the lotus flower. Where are you on the on the chain of the lo lotus flower? You still in the muddy, murky, mur murky water? Are you starting to bloom? Or have you bloomed? Where are you? And then you're talking to Cirrus in this communication of what it is. How do you make harmony and balance in an area that's just not necessarily having it? And then it's bringing in the collective consciousness that needs to go with it. It's a very powerful energy right now coming out of Libra. And it's important that you remember at the end of the week, Sun. The sun and Mercury is moving in there to make sure to amplify that as we go into the next month and the last week, okay? So there's going to be one, two, three, four, five planets there, okay? Even though most people are never going to see any of that, they're going to look right past it and never notice those other two there are amplifying that shit. Okay, with that being said, and lastly, we also have Chiron is sextiling Mars. The wounded healer is trying to give Mars and Lilith the passion, the action, and the aggression even the sexual energy that you need to move forward. In some form or, or another, the Chiron is trying to help support that energy, okay? And move you, you forward from that universal first house as it's moving into the 12th house to find that healing as well as within the outer community and those relationships as well. Then you also have Neptune, which is sextiling Pluto. So it's questioning the magic that you're creating. Are you creating it right and why the hell are you creating it? View that information. And then it is sextiling Jupiter. It is a positive energy, but if you're doing it wrong, you can screw yourself up. So you have the magnet, the abundance, the higher knowledge, and the soulfulness speaking with Pluto about how to let go of the past, move it forward, and Neptune to give you the magic of being able to do it. But then it's also, it's like a chain reaction. It's also speaking with Venus's shadow about making sure you get the right information from learning from the past, like I said, six to eight years ago, something in there. And then you have Saturn and Vista speaking about how do we correct those walls, rules, and boundaries. I love you. So much is happening. And it might take some time to work through it all. It's intense, powerful, tense energy. But there's hidden, powerful, great, positive info in there. But you gotta listen to your soul. You gotta listen to your intuition. I love you, babies. Also, please, 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 please. Watch other, I mean, listen to other Lynn Dreams with me and the Hill Hippie every Tuesday night on, um... FXBG Public Radio, and I will be starting to give the astrology a little bit more in depth, a little bit more like today's one, but a little bit more in depth on the, on that uh, radio show as well. So you'll be able to catch whatever I don't have time to get out in the astrology typically on Other Lynn Dreams, along with whatever the topic is for the day. On Tuesday nights from 10 to 11, please subscribe. And like I said, it's at FXPG Public Radio. Bye, everybody. I love you. Thank <laughs> you.